Throw it away. Alright, let me stream on play, right. Sunday chat. Feb sewing. Say. Say right, that should be live in a moment. Here we go. We are now public. Right, so guys, I'm going to delete the video that I just made. So it's 8 pm, it's Sunday, so it's time for Hawking Lockman's live. So I'll wait for a few people to come in, but we're going to do uh, just a Sunday chat, um, February sewing and grow growing guide and question and answer session if anybody's got any questions. It's more than one pound. That means happy. So, anyway, as I was going to say, I've got a few bits to show everybody. So uh, a few bits that we got from uh, Home Bargains the other day. So we've got some of these Asiatic Pink Lilies. Um, I think there's three bulbs in that pack. Should be, there should be six, should it? No, three. Three in that one, yeah. Mixed Lupins. There's uh, also three in that one. And we've got some Purple and white mixed Leatris, which is these ones. There's ten bulbs in that one. I've even never got them then. And then we've got some of these uh, unicorn flower garden seeds. Um, with different flowers in it. We've got... I don't know if it even tells you what we've got mm. in it. Up to 26 varieties. So these outdoors from February to June. It says top tip: so outdoors after the last frost. Frost will damage seed growth. Stop germination. So that's the best time to sow them is after the last frost. sort of a sewing guide for February um, and also just a basic Sunday chat and uh, questions and answers really. So we'll start with the sewing guide for, for February. Now what we can do is we can do five seeds to sew in February and then we'll do a general seed sewing guide for February. So five seeds to sew in February. So we've got, uh, what, what it is, what I'm going to say first is Although it's too cold to plant your seeds outside directly, most seeds anyway, um, you can get some plantings, uh, some sowings done in the greenhouse or on a windowsill, which is a sunny windowsill, um, usually north facing. But as long as it's a sunny windowsill, it'll be perfect. Um, and a propagator, if you have one, will also help um, to keep it warm. Um, by sowing early on in the year, you give yourself a bit of a head start and also you lengthen your season a little bit. 
and also some plants need a longer season such as um, chilies and um, peppers and aubergines need a longer season um, and then your season of interest could also be extended then by sowing successionally from March onwards so we've got five seeds to sow in February so we have Cosmos now Cosmos are a really easy flower to grow um, I grew them last year found them really easy had no problems with them so I didn't have any issues there um, they're great they look great in borders or even in a meadow setting um, most um, they are annuals and um, you get some, some good some that are good most of them are good for pollinators as well um, the seeds need light to germinate as most seeds um, so sow on the top of the soil and don't bury them underneath um, the under the soil although I did bury them in, under soil last year and they did grow well so it's kind of give and take really with cosmos kale is another one that we could be growing now kale is very hardy um, we started some off in I think it was October and now we've got five kale uh, black Tuscany. I don't, I don't think I'm not sure if they are black Tuscany. They're a, a black version um, of kale, and also we have red Russian kale, which is um, also doing really well in, in the greenhouse. Uh, you sow them indoors in modules or in seven centimeter pots, um, with two to three seeds per module, and then thin out to the healthiest seedling. Sweet peas, we did some sweet peas um, the other week, last week, um, along with some tomatoes. Sweet peas provide a heady summer scent, um, and growing them from seed couldn't be easier. Biodegradable pots or cardboard tubes are best, as they allow the sweet peas to be planted out, pardon me, planted out in their containers. Um, so individually then place on a sunny windowsill in the greenhouse or in a heated propagator um, to get best result right. and also if you put them in biodegradable pots or anything like that um, or a cardboard tube then you're not going to have to plant them out um, if you're planting them out you're not going to be um, disturbing the roots when you plant them out so tomatoes also as I said we did some tomatoes last week Sown indoors in a heated propagator or even in a propagator in a, inside a greenhouse um, or on a sunny windowsill. Tomatoes will germinate within two weeks. Um, sow tomato seeds in compost or, sorry, pots of seed compost or in trays. And place in a heated propagator or on a warm windowsill. Or you can do them just in a propagator inside a greenhouse, which will give you the more of a sort of effects of a heated propagator by having the heat from the greenhouse and then the propagator will add extra heat to, the, to it um, just to make sure you keep the compost moist so they don't dry out and the final one is the fifth seed to sow in February is salvias now salvias um, are great for providing structure and height they can be grown in borders or in containers uh, you sow the seeds under cover in February on top of seed compost, covered with a fine layer of compost, um, then grow in a light warm spot keeping the compost moist. Um, the, you want to go for sort of something like a salvia patens, salvia splendens or a salvia fabriache. They are your best ones to go for. Uh, avoid damping off, always make sure that you take off the lid of the propagator and give the inside a wipe so that you're not getting too much moisture inside your um, propagators. So, what we can also be doing in February is, we have got a few bits we can be doing outdoors. Um, first thing we'll be doing is doing is um, to chit our potatoes now we talked about chitting potatoes in last week's video um, but just as a recap if nobody saw last week's live video 
Um, chitting is basically allowing, sitting the potatoes in a, in a warm or cool, sunny position um, so that they can actually sprout. Chitting is basically allowing them to sprout. So basically, yeah, you should have your seed potatoes by now if you've ordered them. Um, so it's too early to plant them outside, so we chit them. Um, as I said, chitting is a process of pre-sprouting before planting. Um, some people say that there's more more benefits for main crops than for earlies, but um, I think it benefits mo most types of potato. Um, well, I have some had some people say that it's not necessary, but the reason we do it is because the seed potato, the companies that supply the seed potatoes, bring the seed potatoes out too early, so that we have to chip them because we can't actually plant them out at that point. Um, if you buy some from, say, from a, um, a pound shop or um, somewhere like a B and M, like a, a discount store. Um, they'll probably have sprouted already because they'll be sat on a windowsill or they'll be sat near a window probably or within sort of a warmer area so they may have already pre-sprouted um, so that's um, one thing to look out for is that the ones you get from a say from a pound shop would be more likely to have already shitted and then you're going to be um, at the point where they may actually be too, um, may have got too much of a sprout on them. Do you want to let a dog out? So yeah, some people say there's uh, no benefit to chitting. Some people say that chitting benefits all types of potato. We don't, we, I've always chitted my potatoes so I can't say one way or another um, because I don't. Uh, there's no way of having the potatoes long enough that they don't chit because they will chit on their own at some point and start to sprout. So yeah, as I say, put them in a cool, frost-free place. It's probably not best in a shed unless your shed is frost-free. Um, you can put them inside the greenhouse um, because it will more than likely be frost free inside the greenhouse. And then you want to keep all but maybe three shoots on a potato. Hey, uh, I'm working so I won't be able to hang around but I wanted to say hi. Thanks, let's talk about prepping. Thank you for popping on, popping along. Um, I understand people have to work. Um, and I do try and get this video, this this live put out at a time when more people can kind of watch it from all different places, um, not just my UK viewers. Um, I try to cater for my um, my US subscribers, my UK subscribers, and my subscribers from anywhere else in the world. Um, yeah, you want to take off maybe all but three of the strongest shoots. Um, on a potato once they've chitted um, and that will allow the potato to be, a, to be a lot stronger and the plants will be a lot stronger. Also some people say about cutting potatoes um, where you see um, where you see a shoot or an eye cut the potato into sections with one shoot per section of potato and it will still grow a potato. It will still, they will still chit and it will still grow a potato, um, a potato plant. So you can do that if you've not got a lot of seed potatoes. You can cut the potatoes into the sections with one shoot per section so that you end up with um, more than one potato plant from each potato. Um, if, like me, I've got 2.5 kilos and three different varieties, um, two, yeah, three different varieties and 2.5 kilos of each variety. Um, so I won't be actually doing um, the cutting them up. And uh, unless anybody wants to see that done um, and see the results versus 
actually planting the potatoes whole, um, then I could do a half and half kind of thing with each variety of potato. If that is something that you'll be interested in seeing, please do let me know in the comments, um, or please do give me a shout up here if you uh, on the chat if you're in here now if not if you're watching this later on please do let me know down below if you would like to see um, that done and I'll do a video um, like a half and half normal uh, whole whole seed potato versus cut seed potatoes um, if the weather allows you can also sow broad beans outdoors or you could sow them in modules which is what we're going to be doing possibly Tuesday are we busy? We're not busy Tuesday, are we? Yeah, it's Mum's birthday. Oh, crumb. So it'll be Thursday instead then? No, it won't be Thursday. We're at your Mum's on Thursday. It's your Nan's birthday on Wednesday. It'll be Saturday then. <laughs> um, Saturday instead then. That'll be done on Saturday. Um, and I will be doing a video on that as well. <laughs> it's your so, Nan's birthday um, Wednesday, so we're letting blooms also on Also, you birthday. could get... Yeah. You also, you could get some early peas in now as well. Um, get them in a greenhouse in um, some clean guttering um, or just in modules or pots um, to start them off and then getting them in this early in the year will give you a chance to get your peas started earlier a year um, a year a year gardening hi hiya how are you thank you for t popping along and saying hello Um, where was I? Yeah, getting the peas in, in early this time of year and starting them off in the greenhouse will give you a good head start when um, spring comes along and then you get to the hectic point in spring where you're going to be planting loads and loads and loads and loads of different types of seeds and different varieties of each plant if that's what you want to do. My aim is to plant quite a lot of different varieties this, se this year if we can. Um, Obviously, everything allowing. Um, oh, I wanted to tell everybody. I forgot to say. Um, we said about the cat being ill last week. Um, he's been to the vets. He stayed two nights in the vets. Um, he had a blocked bladder and um, he had a catheter into his bladder, which drained his bladder. And um, he is fine now. He's recuperating at home. So um, that is the best news that we've had. It cost us an absolute fortune, though. Um, 300 pound to have the cat um, just basically for two nights in the hospital and um, medication medication and um, to have the catheter inserted and then I had to charge and that was even with PDSA that's like a subsidised um, service you discount, yeah, concessional discount service for people who don't have a lot of money. We usually get we usually get one free pet. But our dog is already registered with them as our pet that we get free treatments for, so we had to pay for treatment for the cat. Anyway, so go back to the sewing guide now. Um, conventional advice is often to sew parsnips now, but. Poor germination rates in the cold, wet soil could possibly be a little bit iffy. So you can give it a go if you want to, um, but if you don't want to risk it, then wait until later on in the year. Um, probably around sort of well, probably next month, March to April. So what can we be sowing under cover or in a greenhouse? We've already um, discussed a few things that we can be sowing in a greenhouse or under cover. Um, so you can get some early crops of lettuce, rocket and radishes on the way. Um, you can also utilise cloches outdoors, but success will be dependent upon the weather. So it's also time to sow your summer cabbages, such as greyhound or primo, um, as well as turnips and spinach. Um, onion seeds should be started now. Again, we did some onion seeds at the beginning of February. If you want to look at the video back, first seed sowing of February, um, we did sow some onion seeds on there. Although I think I may have missed off the onion seeds on that one. It was uh, red barren onions. Um, but we did do some salad onions or spring onions as well. So, 
Onions need about 15 degrees to germinate. Um, so you're best using a windowsill or a greenhouse, obviously, to try and start them off. If you have a heated propagator or you're using a windowsill, you can start off aubergines and peppers and chilies and tomatoes. And we have done so with um, putting propagators in the greenhouse. Um, you could, it, a lot of people say that you get better results waiting until March to do um, these um, aubergines, peppers, chilies and tomatoes. But if you want to get a head start, plus in the UK, if you're in the UK or a cooler climate, um, you want to get the tomato, the chilies and peppers and aubergines started earlier because they need a longer season to actually get going. Um, you, available light is obviously an issue this time of year, but um, I said in my January video, I think, about putting uh, some cardboard covered in uh, tin foil, aluminium foil, and placing it on the um, north side of the um, seed trays to reflect light onto the seeds. seeds. Um, that will help prevent le prevent leggy and drawn seedlings without the expense of any horticultural lights. Um, fruit trees and bushes can be um, planted now, you bear roots. Um, I would say just be aware if you have um, frozen soil. Um, don't try to do it if it's frozen, obviously, because it's going to one, it's going to be a really hard job to do, and two, it's going to be really, um, it's going to be really cold. <laughs> and it's going to be too cold to plant them. Hello from Alabama. Hello there, plain speaker. I've seen you in somebody else's live, um, I think. Um, some time before I do frequent quite a lot of other people's live videos um, yeah but also we can be also um, yeah planting bare root trees and plants uh, trees and shrubs should I say um, you also probably your last chance now if you're especially if you're in the UK or the same kind of climate as the UK um, you can be um, it's probably your last chance to be pruning your apple trees your um, pear trees medlars and um, quinces and also probably last chance to grow uh, prune uh, your raspberries as well um, also, it's probably, I'm trying to think now, if you've got any new um, raspberry plants, it's probably a good idea now to cut them down to maybe about 30 centimeters from the ground, just to um, allow them a little bit more um, growth and time to grow. Um, guys, if you have any questions, by the way, please do, um, do just uh, pipe up in the uh, chat there and I'll um, answer anything as we're going along. Um, just trying to really keep the uh, chat going and keep myself sort of... Uh, Drops Family Garden. Hi, hello, how are you? Um, so yeah, prote uh, protection and forcing now. So we can be doing... Um, you can be forcing rhubarb, again this is if you're in the UK mainly, um, or a similar climate. We can be forcing rhubarb. Um, you can get special forcing tubes for rhubarb. Sounds very nice for the rhubarb. You can actually be forcing your rhubarb now. Um, basically what you want to do is cover... Pardon me. Cover a crown or two with, large, with a large bucket or even upturned, an upturned black bin um, and insulate the outside with straw or manure to add the heat. As I say, you can get special forcing pots which you can use for rhubarb, which you would do the same thing with, basically put the forcing pot over and then insulate the outside with straw or manure. 
doing great just planting some pots this weekend for spring planting nice one as I say it's always good to get ahead at this time of year and try and get um, try and get some uh, stuff planted some stuff sown that you can get sort of going ahead really um, I have known people to plant potatoes in a uh, bag of compost um, like three two or three tubers in, in a bag of compost um, and just let them grow um, in a greenhouse that gets a good start okay so I am not too familiar with your channel so what animals do you have garden greenhouse right so if you want to know what animals I have I have two dogs two cats and three rabbits two turtles and um, I have a fish tank as well. and, and I want to get some chickens at the, the um, allotment but I say garden I have an allotment garden I don't have much of a garden at home so I have an allotment garden um, I have a greenhouse and a polytunnel um, and I have uh, currently two sheds but I'll only have one shed because one of the sheds is going to be repurposed for chicken enclosure um, for the like the inside bit of a chicken enclosure <coughs> most of the slow growers like broccoli and Brussels sprouts yeah get stuff like that started off really this time of year also you want to get things like um, peppers, chilies, um, aubergines and that started off this time of year as well I have a pet rabbit Love saltine crackers. <laughs> no, that's what it likes to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say it like that. Um, yeah, we have three rabbits, but they only eat rabbit food. Um, and apple. like vegetable, leftover vegetables, um, or apples, vegetables, and fruits, and stuff like that. They do like apple, yeah, they do love a bit of apple. Um, lost myself now I plan on getting some chickens in this this spring yeah that's what I'm planning on doing um, need to just build the enclosure and make sure it's fox proof because where we are we're right on the edge of the countryside and um, the plots do have a, a bit of an issue with um, pests getting on um, and um, foxes and mainly foxes and rabbits um, we've also had some uh, what was it? I had some pheasants on the plot the other day. Um, just two pheasants running around, chasing each other, male and a female. Um, but the good thing is we've got a, we've got a hedge on the side of our plot, and we have um, in the summer we have robins nesting in there and all kinds of um, tits and stuff like that. Yeah, I get coyotes, skunks, and lots of ferrets. Yeah, so you're in the U U.S. I'm guessing, saying coyotes. Um, we don't have anything as big as a coyote in this country unless we get sort of a, a dog that gets loose and gets hold of each other, everybody's uh, um, chickens or whatever. Yeah, Washington State, yeah. So, as I say, I'm in the UK, so we don't have anything that big um, over here. We have foxes, really, the main thing to bother um, chickens. Um, although we have rats, rats, I've known rats to bother chickens um, and also the fact if you've got an open enclosure as well um, you need to be careful of larger birds such as buzzards or some other birds of prey um, saying that some birds of prey won't tackle anything bigger than themselves such as um, a kestrel wouldn't bother a chicken because it's too big um, the kestrel wouldn't be able to carry the chicken off um, so you wouldn't have an issue with that sort of thing but we do get quite a lot of buzzards around um, the allotments or flying over the allotments so we're gonna we're gonna actually cover the chicken enclosure as well um, with uh, wire mesh to make sure that um, we're not getting anything in there that we don't want in there um, as I said no foxes no rats um, and hopefully we'll be able to cover the top so we won't be getting no um, birds of prey going and taking the chickens off either. I dried some chilies last year. Do you think the seeds will grow? Uh, I don't know. I've never never done that one myself, so I'm not sure about that. Um, 
I'd have to look into that one. But we do, I do usually do a bit on here, which is, uh, let's ask Uncle Google. So we might do that in a little while. Um, will dried chilli seeds uh, grow? Got some in the garden. Got to put up a deer fence this year. Caught them eating the crowns of my broccoli. Got hawks here a lot. <coughs> I'll have... Bless me. I'll have to cover the top and the bottom with wire mesh. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm covering the bottom with wire mesh. I'm actually digging it into the ground as well. Um, so that they can't get down and dig in direct. So, um, yeah, that's a good question. Did they, was it naturally dried or dehydrated? So look, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to Google search now. Can we germinate gardens? Can we germinate seeds? Uh, hi, Mimsy's garden. Thank you for coming along. I do love your channel, by the way. Um, try to get on into your into your lives as much as I possibly can. I've got a whole bunch of chili seeds from the dried chili pack and bought. Uh, so there's, a, there's always a chance that you could, um, they might germinate the seeds from dried chilies, but you never really know. Um, it's something that you'd have to sort of um, just give it a go. Um, if they're, if they've been dried using heat, then it'll probably be that their seeds would be too, would have been too dried to actually um, be able to germinate into a, into a seedling. But there's always a chance. I'm, I'm guessing that you would possibly be able to do it, yes. So maybe just give it a go and see what see what happens. Um, and just let us know as well, Drop Sunday Garden. Um, not Drop Sunday Garden, sorry, A Year Gardening. Do let us know um, if you're gonna, um, if you do do so, and if you do get any seedlings from the uh, dried chili, dried, the seeds from the dried chilies. Wiccan Chicken Homes Wiccan Chickens Homestead. Hello, hello, how are you? I nearly messed I couldn't say your name then. Um I know I've seen you in other um lives at some point or another. I've got eight viewers. That's like a record. Eight concurrent viewers. Yeah, so I'd say, good day today. You've had a good day today. My day's been okay. We've got the cat back from the vets today. Uh, Paul R., hello, how are you? Um, we got the cat back from the vets today. He had a block bladder, had to have a catheter put in, um, and had to stay two nights over at the pet hospital. But um, he's fine now, so um, that's all good. Uh, a year gardening. Cheers. Dried them in the paper bags in the shed. So we'll plant some and see what happens. Yeah, why not? See what happens. Um, not dehydrated. Yeah, like Mimsy said. Yeah, it should be. Um, they should be fine if you dried them naturally, um, and not in a dehydrator or anything like that. Yeah, if they're not mildewy um, or anything like that, then they're good to go. Just make sure that the seeds are obviously clean, as I say, no mildew or anything on the seeds. So, and, and then you're good to go, basically. Uh, I can't remember where we got to now. Um, yeah, I was saying about rhubarb forcing. Rhubarb forcing pots will cost you, will set you back about sixty pounds. So, probably better off using something a bit smaller. Um, I've just had some more people come in and I've lost track of where we are now. 
could flint opinions on Brexit, I don't care. It's gone on too long. It's got boring now. TNS Dogs and Dragonflies Farm. Good afternoon from North Northern California. Dojo, hello. Uh, we change food, help we'll help the kitty. Yeah, we just put him on to new um, to a new food, so um, hopefully that's going to be better for him. Bounce a slab. Uh, God, there's loads of people in here now. Everybody's saying hello to everybody else. I tried to grow rhubarb by roots and trying seeds. Seeds are, are notoriously hard to grow. Anyone had much damage on their allotments? Me? No, I've not had much damage on the allotment. Luckily, um, Storm Kyra and, and Storm Dennis didn't hit us too hard um, here in South Yorkshire, so um, we've been quite lucky. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, but the winds haven't been um, overly damaging. Late notification, but I'm always checking them. Yes. Where are we? Yeah, forcing rhubarb is obviously going to um, take a lot out of the rhubarb. Um, a lot of energy and time, for, a lot of energy from the rhubarb. Um, browns, so they may not recover for around two years after forcing them. So you're probably not going to want to force them um, maybe every year, but yeah, we can be doing so. Um, so what? What else can we be doing on the plots? Same here, not much damage. One panel came out of the greenhouse, and that's it. Yeah, I don't. I haven't been down since. Uh, I'm going to go down. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to go down now. Probably not till next weekend now, um, because of work and one thing and other birthdays and things like that. I'm not going to be down till next weekend. Um, but um, I will be checking out and seeing what's happened. But. Um, so far, no damage, um, as far as I know. There was no damage from Storm Kyra, um, and Storm Dennis was pretty much the same, so I'm going to guess there's not much damage from that either. Um, so, we want to be... We can still be creating leaf mould um, this time of year as well. Everything is still frozen here, guys, and has to wait until the end of March or so. Yeah, I can understand that. Some places um, it is a lot more, um, a lot colder, so that you um, can't actually do it. I have a green indoor greenhouse in my den. Ah, you see, there we go. Now I know some people who do have indoor, indoor, um, what I call an indoor garden, um, when they can't actually grow stuff outdoors. They've got an indoor garden in actually inside their house. With like grow horticultural grow lights and stuff like that, um, so they can actually grow stuff um, throughout the year, pretty much. So yeah, we've been creating leaf mold and stuff like that. We can be checking on our greenhouses and um, polytunnels, make sure there's no damage to them at this time of year because of the winds and stuff like that. Did in Minnesota, but not so necessary in Pennsylvania. Oh, what was that? I grow mostly greens, tomatoes, carrots and stuff during the winter. 
in, in your indoor greenhouse thing, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, grow lights and power it with a wind slash solar system. That's a good idea. Brilliant idea, that. Not going to be using electricity then, are you? I'm more of a wild forager, mushrooms and herbs. I'd be really, really, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't trust myself to pick wild mushrooms because I'd probably poison myself or something. Um, so I wouldn't trust myself to do anything like that. Um, and probably even herbs. Um, better off just growing my own um, and basically knowing what, what's what. Warmer today in Ohio, snow is melting. See, everybody in the US has had snow. Some parts of the UK have had snow. South Yorkshire has had no snow. We've had a few, like, flurries of snow, but well, nothing on the ground. Sheffield's had snow. So that's what I said, some parts of South Yorkshire have had snow, but mm. we haven't. Well, we haven't. <laughs> not very many dangerous mushrooms out there research is easy to get yeah I suppose so yeah I'm, I'm, I just don't know whether I'd whether I'd want to risk it <laughs> I've heard some horror stories about people um, collecting wild mushrooms and stuff like that so yeah um So we want to be checking out our potato beds from last year over to make sure there's no volunteers. Basically any potatoes that got left over from last season that would try and come up um, on their own. And then they, they could pass on any blight or diseases that we may have, that they may have. Uh, no, no snow here either, South East MS USA, 70 degree temps and tons of rain. We've had lots of rain over this weekend because we just had Storm Dennis blow through, so um, we've had quite a bit of rain, but um, I don't think it was anything as uh, as bad as that storm we had before Christmas. Uh, the one before Brendan, I can't remember the name of it. It was begun with an A, obviously, because it was the one before Brendan, and they go in alphabetical order. probably have about 200 quail always hiding under my cargo trailer I use for hauling stuff with. Oh wow. Fair enough. My brother breeds quail. And chickens. Um, if we're going to be using pots or trades from last season, last year, we want to be uh, making sure that they're clean. That guy, welcome. You're back. And thank you for coming back this week. I don't see any wildlife around these past few years because big hairy critters moved into our area. They don't bother us yet, but when wildlife is gone. Yeah. Um, this year's potato bed will benefit from a um, dose of, comp of, of compost, a dose of manure. I say. Um, or yeah, well rotted manure or compost even um, that can be forked or rotivated into your potato bed. Um, I've got some green manure in my potato bed, um, which I'm going to actually dig in. So hopefully that will help out with um, with that. The guy who DM'd you on Insta about the potatoes, yeah, that guy. I I remember you now. Yeah. I get elk, deer and moose through my yard all the time. Nothing like that here in the UK, we don't really get very much. I've seen foxes, that's about it. And rabbits. And rabbits, yeah. And dead mice. Uh, Moose's Garden, okay, thank you for coming along. Um, please do have the rest, uh, enjoy the rest of your day, thank you very much. I uh, shall see you soon. Pennsylvania mountains are being overrun with Bigfoot, I guess. <laughs> Hi Backyard Gardener, how are you today? I get a fox every couple of nights too. Yeah. We're in quite a populated area where our house is. Um, 
so we don't really see many foxes or anything like that but um, we do get them down at the allotments because it's like right on the edge of the countryside I just leave the potatoes in the bed and dig them up in the winter they just pop up every spring hardly have I hardly have to plant them yeah I suppose that can work for some people but you've got the problem of obviously they could pass on diseases and stuff um, and also you don't want to be planting your potatoes in the same bed every year you want to be rotating your beds so it's probably not the best thing to do I mean if you believe in um, in um, crop rotation I couldn't remember what, I was, what word I was trying to get there. As I say, some people swear by crop rotation, some people don't bother with it. And we can also cover the, the, we can cover the soil with a, a dark plastic or membrane of some description to warm it up. Potatoes do seem to grow well that way, but fungus and other, whatever rot seem more complicated. My first year doing potatoes, so I should be good, lol. Yeah, that guy, you should be fine. Um, just remember that you want to rotate them into a different bed next year. Or if you're growing them in uh, tubs, containers, or whatever you're doing. Um, I know people grow potatoes in containers. Some people grow them in raised beds, some people grow them in the ground still at work while at, um, still working while at work let's talk about prepping hello again glad to see you're still here I've been digging up carrots all winter long yeah see uh, it depends on where you are because you can be we've pretty much had almost nothing from the allotment really um, over winter um, we've had a few winter um, winter salads and all that but not really anything sort of major doesn't get too, too doesn't get cold enough to freeze them if you throw biomass on top of them ah i was going to local b&q tomorrow i'm going to local b&q tomorrow or the day after so i'll see what they have and that will determine what i grow in Good idea. Potatoes will grow pretty much anywhere, but they don't always get big. Iron rich soil seems to grow smaller and rounder potatoes. Tasty though. Yeah. Um, potatoes will grow pretty much anywhere, as, as Bouncer Slab says. But I found, I've always found growing them in the ground, um, like a traditional in ground garden. Um, produces bigger potatoes it can't get down it can get down to tw minus 20 in winter here wow we don't get it that cold here maybe minus four or five but then it depends are you talking about, yeah, it's talking about Celsius yeah no uh, Scotland do get them temperatures but not here in um, in Yorkshire as long as they're edible it's all good yes that guy perfectly fine um i had a lot of potatoes that had holes in them last year um so um, i've been told it's, it's either wire worm or eel worm or something um but apparently uh the green manure that i've planted should um, inhibit the growth of the eel worm or the wire worm whatever it is worst i've had that i can remember is minus two yeah i think we had like minus four at some point. Cow manure seems to give them a boost for a while. Yeah, manure, manure of any type will um, help potatoes. You just throw the biomass on top of the root veggies and basically got a root cellar. Oh, fair enough. As I say, you could cover your soil with a dark fa fabric, um, dark plastic or fabric, uh, like a weed membrane or something like that, or even a fleece. Um, 
to warm it up a couple of weeks before you start to sow or plant anything, especially this time of year. Now I don't pay much attention with the temperature. If it's cold, it's cold. If it's not, it's not. Well, I suppose that's, that's a good way to look at it, yeah. Um, what could we be harvesting at this time of year? Leeks may still be standing in. Um, unless, well, you could have, yeah, you probably still will have, may have still have leeks in the ground. Um, if not, I did say about, uh, in one of my videos about moving leeks into sort of a diagonal trench um, and leaving them sort of laying in the ground. Um, parsnips and swedes will also be um, available uh, now and you can put fleece or straw on top of them to stop them from actually um, freezing into the ground, although a good freeze will help parsnips um, make them sweeter. Um, any cabbage, any of the cabbage families or any brassicas or anything like that um, should be surprised, should be providing us with any kind of sustenance for now. Um, early sprout and broccoli, kale and Brussels sprouts will still be available now as well. Um, and beet leaf or perpetual spinach and chards may also be still growing. Um, other crops you may have would be um, scorzonera, chicory, endive, celeriac, celery or Jerusalem artichokes. So that's pretty much what I was going to discuss on the uh, sowing and growing. Uh, I'm not going to go into it all because I will actually do videos on the separate um, sections. Uh, be right back grabbing some tea. Okay, drops and the garden, no problem. Uh, I should be around for probably another, just over another hour. I uh, wonder if I should attempt using the piles. That Bigfoot seems to be leaving everywhere. <laughs> Probably too many proteins, I don't know. If it's... Uh... Yeah, you shouldn't use it if it's a... Uh... Carnivorous. Um... Just anything from herb herbivores, basically. Broccoli and Brussels sprouts grow in cooler weather, no doubt. Yeah, basically, broccoli and Brussels sprouts, and you get better Brussels sprouts, um, nicer tasting Brussels sprouts as well, from um, in cooler weather. So you can actually still have a, my Brussels sprouts. Unfortunately, got eaten by rabbits, so I didn't have any. I'm back. Tea is brewing. Milk, two sugars, please. I should prefer, I prefer coffee. Leaf lettuce, snow peas and radishes are my early crops. Cucumbers and tomatoes later. See, I've got some, I've actually put some crew, 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 crew. I've actually got some cucumbers and tomatoes in, um, ready to be. I lost where I was now. I've got some cucumbers and tomatoes sown. So hopefully they should be coming up soon. Sprouts, boy. Yeah. Well, it's like a marmite, isn't it? Sprouts, love them or hate them. I'm not a massive fan of sprouts myself. Um, but fresh sprouts are completely different to sprouts you get from the shop. Oh, hang on. I think we dropped out for a minute then, sorry. Now, uh, Pepsi, I'm okay with. No, it's diet Pepsi, so try not to have too much sugar. They're still good to eat, but definitely taste stronger. Yeah. <sighs> it's still minus six here at night. Wow. Wreath, wreath thing. Hi. Diet is not, diet or not, it's still Pepsi. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I like Pepsi Max as well. Um, we usually actually have Pepsi Max, but um, I got this from the takeaway tonight, so they didn't do Pepsi Max. Um, but I have got some Pepsi Max. So I don't know why I'm blabbering on about Pepsi Max. Oh, 
off. Rift thing, I have no idea. It's not my area of expertise. What? The ring needs a bachelor's or a degree to get into animation. Mm. You're a good old lemonade guy. Nah, lemonade is okay, I suppose. Has to be the right lemonade, though. Um, I prefer sort of a Schweppes or. It has to be Schweppes. Whites. No, it has to be Schweppes. No, yeah, it has to be Schweppes. The lady has spoken. Sprouts, butter and yellow American cheese. Mmm. Currently it's about 8 degrees for you, for me, says that guy. What's our temperature at the moment? 6 degrees here. Um, sure? According to my watch. 7 up. Yes. 7 mm. up's fine. Um, or just uh, I like cloudy lemonade as well. Fancy drink. Now I suppose pretty much any sort of fizzy beverage, as long as it's not got too much sugar in it. Um, preferred probably the diet versions of stuff. Tango. <laughs> um, <laughs> tango or anything like that. Tango. Um, What's the other Fanta? Um, get the zero versions. Dr Pepper again, zero. Um, Coke Zero is. I'm not overly keen on Coke Zero. I prefer Pepsi Max to Coke Zero. But yeah. Could you sell something? Pepsi Max actually tastes more like Pepsi, more like normal Pepsi than Coke Zero it tastes like Coke. Fresh lemon squeeze and add firm, add sugar. And vodka to taste. Potatoes will make vodka and engine degreaser. Wow. Anything as long as it's not apple, I have I'll have it. For me, apples in anything other than natural apple doesn't taste right. <laughs> I like apple juice. And also like I like cider as well. It's my favourite one of my favourite alcoholic drink along with Jagermeister. Um Jagermeister and uh, energy drinks, as long as it's a sugar free energy drink. Would never drink a soft drink again if you knew what Cenomix was. I suppose. Apple juice is good, yeah. Conversation shed, hello, welcome along. Apple pie, apple drinks, apple sweets. They are just no, no, no for me. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of apple pie or apple crumble or anything like that. Oh, apple crumble. Um, apple jack. Apple crumble. Why not? Sugar-free energy drinks. You try... Sneak. <laughs> Great corn product. Would rather have pecan or peach pie. Pecan pie. I've had pecan pie before, and also like um, what do we get? Maple and pecan slices we get from uh, from Tesco's here. It's a brand of sugar-free energy drink. What is? Peach pie sounds good. Um, I like peaches, but I'm not sure about peaches and anything else. Peaches and cream is nice, is nice. Um, but never cooked with peach before. That guy, apple crisp is a delicious dessert. Um, yeah, I've never cooked peaches before, so I don't know how that would work, but or what that would actually taste like. I know people do cook with peaches, um, and also pears and apples and all well, that sort of thing, but it's not for me. Sneak is, oh, Sneak is uh, energy drink, sugar-free energy drink. No, I haven't tried that conversation. 
said. Um, Robertson's Belly Acres. Very good word, uh, play on words as we get a name there, just like mine. Hello, how are you? Uh, sneak is an energy drink. You get it for the mix it at home. Like, ah, I see. Oh, I do like a good apple turnover. Mm, not a massive fan of apple turnover. I used to like them, but I'm not. I've gone off them. Uh, pineapple juice, yeah, do like pineapple juice. So you always plant the same things in your garden, or do you mix it up? I, I always mix it up. I try and do different things, different times. Um, last year was my main first year growing properly, like for a whole season um, at the actual allotment. Um, I tried growing a few bits at home before, but um, yeah, I'll, I'm try, I'll try and grow anything really, um, pretty much. That's probably the bin that just fell over again. <laughs> Peach pie is just too sweet for my bitter old palate. <laughs> Doing great, love yours name as well. Yeah, thank you. People do tend to like the name. Um, I've got to get a better, oh, I've got a cake, I've been given a cake. Thank you. Okay. Well, as soon as I'm eating cake, this is a, Cream, cream slice. What is your favourite cake? Yeah, I know I said about no sugar and then I'm eating cake. But. It's a treat. It all... Yeah, it's a, like, basically a piece of land that we um, rent from not from the council even, it's from, um, basically from, a, a, they rent it from the council and then they rent it on to other people. Um, and we have like different plots of land within the allotment. Plots. Um, ours has 52 plots. And we're number 52. Cucumbers seem easy to grow. We grew loads of cucumbers last year. I actually had to get rid of some plants. We had 25 plants at one point. I think you just got my camera around. Sorry. Been a few months, but I do. I want to apologise what happened in that horticultural help is no oh, discord might not remember I don't I don't remember what happened. Doesn't really matter. That guy is still is it still winning are you uh Confetti Angels food with white sweet frost mmm sounds nice. We just wondered seem a lot of people grow on land they don't own. I don't own the land, but I do rent the land from a landlord, basically. The wind has madly died down, that guy. Yeah, same here. So the rich still own all the land in the UK, I guess. I suppose pretty much um, the land that we rent the allotments on actually belongs to the council. The allotment society then rent, rent the land from the council, and then they they then rent plots of that land onto us as allotmenteers. So something similar, I think you have in the US is the community garden. I think, although that may be something completely different. Um, I'm actually not sure. But some people have said, is it something like a community garden? But I think community gardens are usually something that several people actually tend to one pot of land. 
um, whereas an allotment garden is actually yours to do with as you wish as long as you keep within the rules of the allotment society. But yeah, pretty much the rich own all the land and they then give it, I give it, um, I suppose they then portion it out to the poor people as they wish, as they see fit. Yeah, out west, out west, out west where I live, you can buy acres and acres of land and you have, if you have the money, yeah, see, that's something I don't have the money to do. Um, I would love to have like a small holding, or say like a, 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 I think in the US to call them homesteads, um, or a small farm, um, and actually be able to do what I wanted to do with that land. Um, but I don't have the money to do that, so that's not something that I can actually do. Um, I couldn't even rent some somewhere like that. They, they're way too expensive for me to be able to afford. Uh, I don't make any money from YouTube, so, um, and I don't make any money from the actual um, produce that I produce, um, other than the fact that I don't have to buy too much fruit and vegetables. It's the same in America, nobody owns their own land. If you don't pay your taxes, you can lose half a million in property over just a few thousand dollars in taxes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Move to Canada, you can find lots of cheap land cheap. They might even give it to you. <laughs> I'd love to live in Canada. Yeah, I'd love to live in Canada. You've got family in Canada, don't you? Mm -hmm. I've got family in Australia. I never understand. I'll never understand Canada. Why is it so heavenly? I want to move to either Canada or Texas, slob. <laughs> I like the southern... Um, Southern Bell's accent um, from America, um, sort of, I suppose Texas, Georgia, Alabama, all that sort of area. Um, anywhere South American, Southern America, Southern US. I want to move to Alaska, or stay a while, or stay where I am. Huh. <laughs> The only problem with Alaska is it's frozen pretty much most of the year, so you can't really grow much. Unless you grow indoors. Barbecue and big steaks. What I mean is tax, taxes are like paying rent to the government. If you don't pay your taxes, you will, they will take your property and resell it. Yeah. They grow stuff all the time in Alaska. During the summer, you have almost no night. Wow, probably well. that's cool. I never knew that. Hippity hoppity. We own this property. <laughs> so anyway, yes. Conversation said. How is potatoes doing? Um, they are waiting patiently, hoping to be able to be, uh, hoping they're going to sprout soon, but not doing anything just yet. Um, I will get a video out on um, them soon, hopefully. In the winter, you basically get no light trade off. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, it's like no night, no day kind of thing so my potatoes are still in the egg that egg thing that's perfectly fine that guy as long as they're sprouting um, and they're not getting too big uh, the sprouts aren't getting too big then you're fine they will stay there until it's time yes that's perfectly fine already started some kale yeah craving fresh cabbage wondered if the Amish community has any growing yet <laughs> I had some kale which I started in, I said earlier, I started some kale in um, October, uh, October or November I think it was, um, and it's still 
relatively small at the moment, but it is growing. Um, so I might actually get some kale soon. I've also got some chard, rainbow chard, which is growing away nicely. Sorry. I've been asked to try growing a swede. I tried swede um, and celeriac last year, um, but I got loads of top growth on them, but there was no root on them. So I don't know what happened with them. Can't beat fresh veggies. Charles Boldington, good evening. Sunday is treating me nicely, thank you very much. I'll grow rainbow chard all winter long, grows great indoors. Just trim two or three inch leaves and leave and for salad every day. Yeah. Big gravy Comrie. Hi there, how are you? Uh, let me see the rabbit. I have chard. I've just been growing almost three winters now. Yeah. Um, I grew a lot of chard in um, autumn. I mean, I've got, I've got leaves that are like that big. How oh, huge. Turnips and kohlrabi are good cold weather veggies. Yeah, I grew some turnips in the summer, but they kind of went, they went mushy, um, so I didn't really get anything from them. Uh, I, get, I got some baby turnips from the greenhouse during the winter. Have you missed much? We were talking about earlier about um, what we can be sowing and growing, especially in the UK or a similar climate. Um, this time of year um, but if you want to go back afterwards and re-watch re -watch the video um, that's perfectly fine but I will be doing some videos on sowing and growing guides anyway I grow mostly baby greens and we've also talked about potatoes and what people like um, soda wise um, and I think we had a bit of a conversation about cakes can't and what people basically what people grow in their garden What's your favourite thing to do with fresh veg? It's got to be a salad, isn't it? Uh, I mean, potatoes, for me, fresh fruit and veg, potato, tomatoes, I'm going to do that again. Every single video I've done on tomatoes, I call them potatoes for some reason. I have no idea. I know that they're related, but I don't have any idea why I call them potatoes when they're tomatoes. Tomatoes and um, strawberries, barely any tomatoes or strawberries make it home. They're usually eaten there and then on the plot. Um, the same with um, corn, um, sweet corn. So about Swedes. I didn't grow, well me, I tried growing Swedes but they were... Um, to that there was more top growth than anything and nothing else so drop sunny garden said i grow mostly baby greens um or micro greens in the winter for salads just harvested some radishes yeah i was going to try my i'm going to try micro greens i did do a video on micro greens i'm going to try some next um next year um in the, in the winter in winter eat it up yes eat them yes I made a video of kohlrabi the size of a basketball last year. It was non, not only impressive, but it was delicious. And they're supposed to only be like the size of tennis balls. I have some spinach seeds. When do you think I should start them? Should I start them inside? I don't have a greenhouse. You can start them on a windowsill. Um, spinach, I think, is probably better off starting next month. Um, but... You want to start them on a windowsill um, 
preferably north facing um, sunny windowsill potato tomato, potato tomato what's the difference one's red one's not <laughs> I'm trying them this year what do you do they mind being transplanted I don't know I think because I transplanted mine that's probably why they didn't like they didn't do very well um, so clear crosses will be will, will suffice yeah clear crosses will suffice my strawberries do do great but the neighbour kids hit them pretty hard <laughs> Outside under a cover, do you mean? Yes. That's what he means. This stream is flames. Yellow jackets tear at my strawberries every year. That guy says he's colour blind. I guess the Amish grow great giant variety of kohlrabi. That's where they got them. That's where we got them. Ah, so I suppose. Bouncer Slab says, type fire. Charles, I think it was. I think Big Gravy is a troll. Maybe. What's Big Gravy saying? In certain flame emojis, streamers in his flames. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna take another uh, another early night. See ya. See ya, that guy. Big Gravy Conway. People were saying that they thought that you were a troll. Just so for you, you're not. You didn't say anything. What did you say about? Uh, this was flames or something. You're trying to insert a flame emoji. Kohlrabi is lovely, but don't know. Don't know if I'm growing it this year. The kids love it though. Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm probably gonna try kohlrabi again this year. I think he's okay. Yeah, it just means that this stream is good. Thank you, Big Gravy Conway. Thank you. I think the fact that you um, kind of just did some... You posted a few messages one after the other and they didn't make much sense. Um, people thought that you were a troll, but I think you're okay. No problem. Sorry for the breakdown. That's completely fine. I have no problem with that. As long as you be an A of yourself in here. I have no issues with that. So what else can we think about? What else could I what else am I thinking about this year then? Oh I'll show you these guys because I showed them at the beginning of the stream but nobody was not many people were here at the beginning. So these are what I got from uh home bargains the other day. It's like a if for you US guys it's like a discount store. So I've got some Asiatic pink lilies. There's uh, three bulbs in here. I have some mixed lupins. Again, three bulbs. Purple and white mixed liatris. These ones. These are ten bulbs. It's good for bees. And we also got uh, these... Uh, Unicorn garden, unicorn flower garden seeds, and this is pick these ones. There's like 26 varieties, cover up to 25 meters squared. I so. picked all of them, what you're on about. Well, no, I picked the liatris. Oh, did you? Well, they're good in my flower bed. Yeah. Walmart, well, I suppose they're kind of like Walmart, I suppose, yeah. I don't really know what Walmart's like, to be honest, because I'm not from the US. I'm from the UK. Do you think towns should be taking initiative to plant more fruit trees around towns? I don't know, because just people would just go around pinching the fruit, wouldn't they? Oh, is that the idea? 
I sprinkled some of that exact seed last year, ended up with a buttload of grass. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens with it anyway, see if it comes up. If not, then it's only, what, pound 49 or something. Yes, Charles, I think it's more should be done to help the environment and have clean air. I love that you have a bucket of apples at the door for kids in the street. Love to have a bucket of apples at the door for kids in the street to call me the Apple Man. Fair enough. <laughs> Sounds a bit uh, strange. We're at an hour and 21 minutes on this stream today. So I think we'll see where we go with this. You planted several fruit trees when you bought your place. Yeah, I'm going to be getting some fruit trees down at the, um, at the allotments and that. So, yeah. I've got three already. Got cherries in the first year, yeah. I've got two cherry trees, uh, an apple tree and some black currants, black currant bush. Can we get a blackberry plant? Prayers from the speeches and Pears, plums and peaches the second year. Ah. Hmm. Apple trees are so common here, they ain't worth planting. Okay. <sighs> so we like to have our own apple trees because they don't get told off for scrumping or whatever then. <laughs> That Washington State is famous for apples. Okay. I just posted the giant coal rabbit video on my community post for everyone to check it out later. Not the biggest one we've had, but it's still huge. Okay, Bouncer Slab, we'll check that out later on. He's throwing fruit in the street, you know, classified as littering. I suppose so. Yes, we could grow more apples and make more scrumpy. I was saying about cider earlier, actually. Drinking cider. I do like, um, I am partial to a nice uh, cider. Yeah, my kohlrabi didn't do too great either last year. I didn't really get... I got one which got kind of about the size of a tennis ball, but it was... They'd been, the outside of it had been chewed on by God knows what, so it wasn't really very... It wasn't really edible. More cider and apples. <laughs> Can I open this? No, don't open it yet. Do a kohlrabi is you've got to sow it in the right time. Yeah. It gets too hot, it goes straight to seed and doesn't boil up. But the same if it gets too cold.
unicorn and our unicorn flowers. He said I could grow them in the garden. Where are we? Terrace chocolate orange. Because you could have just said what some of my videos the unicorn is in a few of them. Well, <laughs> You never talk about cactus on this channel. I don't. I don't grow cacti, cactus and stuff like that. Um, something that I've looked into, but um, it's not really something that I'm kind of that um, sort of interested in at the moment. Heinz tomato seeds. Yeah, I've seen them. I think Suttons do them. Dr. Sammy Garden says I only grow stuff that can be eaten. Uh, I grow I grow mainly uh, food crops, but I also grow flowers and stuff as well. Just to make the place look nice. Hmm. Was it Sutton's? I'm going to order. I'm going to go order some. I think it might be Sutton's. I'm not sure. I'm sure I've seen them, one of the... Uh, I might have been Garden Organic that I see them in. I can't remember now. If you grow non-edible flowers, we need to sell. I'll just do it to make the place look nice. Charles, I'm going to ban you from the chat in a minute. What's he doing then? about growing marijuana. That's Why is Charles getting banned? Talking about growing marijuana. It's illegal, so we won't talk about it. Maybe legal in a lot of countries, but it's not legal to grow it in the UK. Okay. Let's, let's steer off the subject and then we'll be fine. I don't think it's legal to grow it in a lot of countries. To be to be fair, might be legal, might not be illegal to smoke it, but yeah, away we go. What tomatoes am I trying? Top tomatoes am I trying to grow this year? Um, I've oh got. Black opal. Black opal. Um, San Marzano. We've got some cherry tomatoes, I think just called red cherry. Uh, it's 
a couple of others I'm really I can't remember at the moment um, no. off the top top of my head. No. Mm. Samazano I said about them it was on my Monday. They're the big big tomatoes, um, beef steak tomatoes. Favorite alcoholic drink cider. I grew a crop of tomatoes last year. They were amazing. T tomato, fresh tomatoes are lovely. Roma cherry grape and beef steak tomatoes. Yeah, I'm growing plum, uh, which is San Mazzano. Cherry tomatoes, which are, I think I've got yellow, yellow something or other. Um, and black opal, they're both uh, cherry tomatoes. I've got a beef steak tomato, which is my Monday. Sam, I try. I... Gardener's Delight, I think I've got some of them as well. Never try growing nuts, no. Yeah, I don't know whether it's my internet or whether it's actually my fact that it's um, the weather's not great here. Blame Dennis, yeah, let's blame Storm Dennis. Peanuts are not actually nuts. No, they aren't. They're uh, a legume, yes. You know, a high pitched sound in the background. I think probably the washing machine. spinning yes big gravy economy we, this is a gardening channel please keep it to gardening or some uh, similar topics Charles. You plant garlic every year or just leave it in the bed to grow all year long. Um, plant garlic every year. Yeah, you can do that, yes, conversation check. Um, autumn or in the spring.
Yeah, I never tried growing uh, there. I never tried growing um, garlic before. It's my first time growing garlic, so I'll, yeah. Yes, big gravy, but steering off topic, this is a gardening channel and we want to stick to gardening. I haven't tried garlic, I haven't tried garlic chives. No, it wasn't actually aimed at me that, but uh, yeah. Drops, you're trying to grow some ginger this year. Good. Never tried that either. Garlic is easy to grow, I just never had the space for it before. Yeah, make, yeah, obviously uh, make sure that you feed garlic come springtime because it will get, um, doesn't need to be fed quite a lot. Yeah, I was thinking about giving garlic chives to go. I wasn't sure um, whether, whether to try them or not. Gravy, gravy, no problem. So just keep it gardening and we'll be fine. That's good, drops on the garden. Yes, you must. Yes. You must try garlic jives. Wild garlic, yeah, I've seen the wild garlic around rivers and that. I've heard of that. I've heard of them beef and onion plants. Um, I think maybe Sutton's or something that was actually growing them. Off topic, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to answer an off topic question. I'm from Yorkshire. Hmm, cool. Does everyone grow asparagus? Um, I've not tried growing asparagus. I've got some uh, asparagus crowns which I'm going to be planting. I might try, I'm going to try asparagus.
Okay, talk to you later about it, sir. Ooh, sounds nice. Big gravy, I answered your question. I said I'm from Yorkshire. Yeah, lemon, lemon balm and mint um, will spread if you don't contain them. And then personal training. Hi, how are you? Yeah, asparagus takes a little while to, to grow, um, like three, three years or so. No problem with the personal training. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, you can um, have some young. Yeah, this conversation said says um, don't harvest your crowns in the first year, and then only twenty five percent in year two. Perfect advice. Beyond that, you know nothing. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know quite a few people who have to use raised beds because um, their garden soil is not good. Yeah, as I said, I, I grew green manure um, in one of my beds, the potato bed. Um, it's supposed to help with, um, I grew mustard. Um, it's supposed to help with uh, eelworm, you know, potatoes. Okay, well, I suppose you have to allow 75% of asparagus to go to seed in the first two years. After that, they mature nicely. Yeah, I don't know that much about asparagus. I've never grown it before myself. So um, that's good to know.
Yeah, stuff that breaks the soil up and adds nutrients, basically a cover crop or a green manure. Um, something like, as I said, like a, um, a mustard or even like a rye grass or something like that would do really good. Yeah, it should get your soil looking soil great in a couple of years' time. Um, and some are really good for some uh, cover crops or green manures are really good for um, harder soils. Um, I think clover is quite good in uh, clay soil. Red clover or um, white clover. I've eaten, I've seen that, the asparagus that look like, they look like ferns in the first couple of years or whatever. Um, but yeah, they are quite nice, um, either raw or just sort of um, steamed. Yeah, wood chips, again, covering parts um, of soil that you're not using and the soil will actually um, benefit from it. Nice, 24, 24 crowns. I'd say I, I, it's been my first time growing um, asparagus, so I will actually be doing um, asparagus, um, just doing a couple of asparagus just to see how it goes really um, and how to grow it. It holds moisture and allows worms and bugs to break up and enrich the soil. Exactly. I had fresh asparagus and cheese on Friday. It was locally grown in a greenhouse. The more the cut, the more they cut it, the more they cut it comes up. Yeah, sort of a cut and come again thing, isn't it? Yeah, just as long as it's not acidic wood chip, um, that's a good. That is a good point. Conversation shed. Yeah, don't use pine trees. Hollandaise sauce and smoked salmon on asparagus. Mmm. Sounds nice. Okay, balance the slab. Laters, taters. I think we're probably going to start calling this a, calling this a, da, uh, a day anyway because uh, we're at uh, nearly 10 o'clock at night. Um, you can't, well, you can use pine needles to supply vitamin C, that's, that's a good point. Right, buy a conversation shed, um, and uh, bye everybody, I think I'm going to just get off now um, and uh, get some sleep, um, and I shall see you all hopefully next Sunday, um, hopefully you'll pop in and see me. Um, thank you for coming, and um, I shall see you all later. Thank you, and bye bye.
Go around the circle, check that out. Alright, see you all. I'm going to get off now. See you all later. Bye bye.